Forward. My name is George Drakilis, and I'm a professional engineer in Canada. After many years of implementing lean thinking tools and techniques in many different companies, locally and globally, it became very evident to me that there was one common theme that stood out above all others. Lean rarely worked as we expected. Before you close the book in validation of your thoughts about lean, read a little further. You will not be disappointed. I feel I have to justify my comment. Sure, lean works, and I have seen amazing transformations in the initial year of implementation, or while I am there. These transformations are usually physical in nature, like cleaning up the place, moving machines close together, organizing the office for better communication between people, and the list goes on. All of these things add to the efficiency of a process, and in some cases to the efficiency of the company as a whole. Often a company is in crisis mode when they start lean. The crisis ranges from having to reduce costs, or they will not be in business in one year's time, to there is so much business we cannot take on any more work until we fix our process deficiencies. In both cases, I do my best to help, and lean works beautifully in the first year. What is the problem? My big aha came when the government in Alberta, Canada asked me to create an online course that educates companies in lean thinking. They required me to focus on the leadership in the organization, the president, the directors, and senior managers only. They realized that the companies in their province of Canada must strive for sustainable change and not initial quick wins by applying lean tools. In June 2012, Dr. Liker came to my hometown of Winnipeg, Canada to speak at our lean conference. I had made arrangements to pick him up at the airport, take him on a boat ride on the Red River, then take him to the conference where he would do a keynote speech for just over one hour, and then drive him back to the airport all in the same day. I had a few great conversations with him, but two of them stood out for me. The first was when we were on the river and started discussing the Canadian Museum of Human Rights, unfinished at the time, which was well over budget, coming in at a total cost of $351 million and two years late in its construction. We talked about how lean applies to all industries, including construction. The second came after his speech. Many managers were waiting in line for Dr. Liker to sign his latest book, The Toyota Way to Lean Leadership. When one of the managers asked, Dr. Liker, what is it that prevents lean thinking from being sustained in many companies? Jeff looked the manager in the eyes and said, in one word, leadership. The conversation that then ensued had me thinking about this missing link. I do not know about you, but when I receive clarity in my life, I capture it by setting a new goal around that new focal point. In this way, I start moving towards it, hopefully in the right direction. This was the right direction, and I knew it. In the following months, I established and developed a friendship with Jeff to the point of having him do some webinars for my organization. These later became a new online course on lean leadership, www.toyotawaytoleanleadership.com. We later decided that this information was too valuable to leave in video format alone, where their access was limited to those who could afford to pay for an online course and coach. We decided that the best way to spread the word is through a book. That book is now in your hands, Developing Lean Leaders at All Levels. In my 20 years implementing lean thinking, I had not come across this kind of contribution to the lean world before, that is, until Dr. Liker's speech in my hometown. I just had to share it with others. Whether you know anything about lean, or you're a 25-year veteran of Toyota, its origin, you will learn what you need to know from this book. I always knew it was about the people. But what was it about the people that made Lean work? Jeff deeply describes the core skills, values, behaviors, patterns, and the prescribed process a manager leader must have and follow for long-term success. He compares this success with that of an athlete or musician who, using a coach, develops while performing their skills. He describes how a coach identifies their weaknesses in a systematic way so that the student can improve their form and accelerate their development on the way to reaching their goal or target condition. Outside of the workplace, everyone should use a coach if they are serious about their craft. It turns out this is also true inside the workplace. This book and Jeff's contribution to the lean world is nothing short of stellar.
While we are living in a world that bombards us with information, Jeff builds on his 32 years of research and knowledge of the Toyota inner workings to get to the point that you, as a student, coach, manager, or CEO, know what to do to succeed in the workplace regardless of the industry in which you work. As an example of the power of learning, I have converted my own approach to implementing the physical part of lean to one of developing lean leadership. I start with the core values of the organization, and just as I have been learning about Toyota, I coach the organization to clearly define their core values. Then I move to the first step of the Lean Leadership Development Model, Commit to Self-Development. With leaders in the organization reaching out for help and recognizing the need for self-development, it is easier to guide them up the mountain. What a novel concept. Help those that wish to help themselves. The four steps of the Lean Leadership Development Model are 1. Commit to self-development 2. Coach and develop others 3. Support daily Kaizen, or improvement 4. Create vision and align goals As a Lean Leader myself, I have not stopped learning. I have a vision of my ideal state that I am working towards every minute of every day of my life. I learned from Dr. Liker's books in the past, and most recently from Jeff as a friend, that after you strip away all of the obstacles one by one that prevent you from reaching your target condition, one day you will look back on how far you've come. Join Dr. Liker and myself as we greet students and coaches from all around the world in our online community at www.leanleadership.guru forward slash community dot html. Understand when you get to your target condition, there's always another one in front of you, which is why this will always be a lean journey for me. I have enjoyed my journey thus far. I look forward to hearing your stories once you connect with this book and our online network of lean practitioners. Initially, I made the statement, lean rarely worked as we expected. And for many companies, it may never work without the leadership and the process in which they must go through to develop their skills and those of their subordinates. That's why this book offers a contribution like no other. It gets to the core of the matter. You. What can you do to develop yourself? What can you do to develop others? How can you develop a culture of continuous improvement to achieve breakthrough goals and stay ahead of the competition? All of these questions are answered with great insight in this book. All are substantiated with case studies. I thank Dr. Jeff Liker for this gift and for allowing me to join him in spreading the word.